Hey everybody, happy holidays and uh, welcome. I have a story, I'll jump right in. I have a story and a message to share. So if you're interested, uh, hang tight with me and uh, let's get through this because I think at the end, uh, it'll leave you with something to think about. So I went to the store earlier today to get my lunch um, at Whole Foods and I stopped at the uh, newspaper rack on my way out uh, as I typically do and glance at the headlines and something on the cover of the Boston Globe caught my eye. So as I looked down, I saw this headline, worst year ever, worst year ever. And also in parentheses, it says, hmm, that rings a bell. So I'm um, like, what's that all about? And I picked up the newspaper and uh, I ended up buying it because I needed to see this closer and uh, just read through the first few paragraphs. And what it is in synopsis is that the writer has chosen to um, say and make a case and an argument for 2017 being the worst year ever, at least in his opinion. And he goes on to give a litany of reasons why. One excerpt um, after opening up about how 2016 was bad enough and sharing some of the examples of what went wrong. At one point he says, but 2017 has been such an unrelenting calamity that it's hard to find evidence that anybody even remembers the complaints about 2016. So question for you, have you ever heard that metaphor or fable where somebody is searching for a, a book. They go into a dark, a very, very dark room, and they're looking for a specific book. Uh, and let's just say that book is, has a red cover and a specific title, and he has a flashlight only, and there's hundreds of books in the room, hundreds of books. And he goes in looking for this one book in particular with a very sharp flashlight. And looking around the room, he's looking past all these other books, and eventually he does find his red cover book, exactly what he's looking for. Um, and it works with the flashlight. The point is that in the process, he's looking past hundreds of other books, some of which may be good, some of which may be great, some of which may be not so great. But he was focused in on finding that one book. Well, we do the same thing in life. We do the same thing in life. When we get at times something stuck in our head, an idea or a mindset set in our mind or our head, and we look at things with just that laser focused flashlight and we're only seeing what we're looking for. We're only finding what we're specifically looking for because of what's, when, what's going on in our mind. And when I saw this article, it made me think of that viewpoint again too and that story because there are so many awesome, incredible things going on in this world and amazing people doing incredible things and, you know, believe me, make no mistake, I'm not suggesting, nobody would suggest or should suggest that we ignore some of the really bad things and tragedies and the fires and the terrorist acts and the shootings. And even as of late, all this, all this news about um, uh, sexual harassment and things that are coming to the surface finally, um, which is really good that it's being called out. So we don't ignore any of that. But it has its place in our lives. And what we also want to do, and what I try to do, is focus on all the positive stuff going on. There's so many amazing people. Just this year alone, I've met literally dozens and dozens of people that I, just, I have so much respect for and admiration for as I've gotten to know them as colleagues and some of them even really good friends who are really doing good things in this world. And I've learned about and have come across online and in other forums uh, hundreds more. And uh, whether I listen to their podcast or a video or a talk that they're doing, there's so many great people out there doing really cool stuff, amazing stuff, transformational stuff that is impacting so many people. And sometimes we just neglect to remember or to put our spotlight, flash our flashlight. You know, we go into this dark room looking for this one book, you know, we're, we're in the mindset of, and we've all done it. I've done it. Uh, I'm mad at somebody or I'm thinking a negative thought and that day or that moment, I'm like, oh, everybody sucks today. So my flashlight's on, you know, everybody sucks today that I come across or it's bothering me. And we can't, we can't do that. It's very unhealthy. We need to shift our mindset and remember, um, and I've worked on this a lot this year and, and, um, and I, it's made a big difference. We have to flash our flashlight on all the good. And it's not, it's not even just people. I mean, think about all the things you come across in our lives, how much we have to be grateful for. Um, even if you're in sort of a ho-hum job, but you get an opportunity to go through some training or meetings, or you work on a good team with other good people, and you have an opportunity to collaborate and, and learn from others and grow from those experiences. Like, there's a lot of good stuff going on, even sometimes in the most mundane situations at work or 
in our personal lives, you know, just the opportunity to get out and go places. I mean, just this past year, I went to several new places. I got to spend amazing time in the Dakotas. I drove cross country twice. And uh, I mean, it's been a challenging, but great year, interesting year. I've learned a ton and starting a whole new initiative and work where I'm doing new things and putting myself out there, like doing videos like this and uh, that are out of my comfort zone and completely new to me, but I'm learning and growing and uh, I'm not gonna focus on or shine my spotlight on just the stumbles or the bad things. I wanna focus on and flash the light on all the things that I'm learning. And uh, you know, one other thing I think about is that I've grown a lot closer to uh, my brothers and my parents. And uh, I recently lost my older brother, as some of you know, and uh, I had a chance to really bond and get very, very close with him for the last five, six months of his life. And it's something I'll never forget. And um, I've gotten closer with my other brother and uh, my parents through all this. And uh, it's just, it's changed, changed my life. And so when I write, when I write my story for 2017, I have things that I could hang my hat on that weren't so good, that were in some cases horrible and um, challenging. But I'm not gonna write a story that 2017 was the worst year ever. Why would I do that? When I have access to in a room full of hundreds of amazing things, I'm gonna sh shine my light on all the good stuff that's going on. So question and challenge and call to action for you as you wind down your 2017 is what story are you going to write about your year? If you sat down and wrote a story and got to write a headline in the Boston Globe or any other newspaper about 2017 and your year, what would you write? Think about it. I'm not going to tell you what you would write, but think about what you would write and what would your headline be? And I bet you for most, if not all of you, it's not going to be worst year ever. And if it is, I ask, do, do a little soul searching and stop and think a little bit. Spend some time thinking about and writing down all the good things that happen. Because even amongst, and again, we're not sticking our heads in the sand. Let's not ignore some of the really bad things that have happened. But let's use those to learn and then turn around and focus on all the great stuff and things that we can continue to do to get better, to help people, uh, and to grow. So, Call to action, write your headline for 2017. If you want, write the whole story and make it, it doesn't have to be the best year ever, but please don't make it the worst year ever, okay? Thanks for listening and uh, I will see you again soon. Have a great holiday season.